It's so nice having a new fly tying bench. It feels so good to be able to sit down to a desk that's got drawers, space to put all of my books and DVDs, and just makes me feel tall for once. <laughs> Today we're going to be tying a fly that I've started to call Shwesh Shrimp. It's a shrimp slash minnow fly that is deadly on redfish. As you can see from this video, all I had to do is put it in front of the fish, strip it once, maybe twice, and the redfish was on top of it like ugly on a sheep's head. One of the good things about this fly is you can substitute different materials. If you don't have any craft fur handy, you can go ahead and use bucktail, cattail, use whatever you think you can for your tail and for your wing. But for those that want my formula, here's the supplies listed. So let's go ahead and get started tying this thing. First off, I'm going to debarb my hook. It's not the most necessary thing. But when you're handling fish that like to swallow hooks, such as bluegill, redfish, speckled trout, it's usually a good idea to debarb them. Not to mention when you hook yourself, and you will one day, it'll make getting the hook out a lot easier. Next up, we're going to go ahead and put our dumbbell eyes on. I start my thread right at the eye of my hook, and I take it back about a hook eye's length away from the eye. <laughs> Once I put my thread where I need it, I grab my eyes and I begin taking wraps from one side, two or three wraps, wrap around the other side, two or three, switching hands if needed, and then I'll start to wrap around the base of the eyes. I won't do crisscrossing wraps that alternate one direction or the other. I prefer to try and cinch them down. Now granted, these eyes may not sit still while you're tying your fly. That's okay, that's why there's head cement when we're done with our fly. Once I get my eyes where I like them, I'm going to take touching thread wraps all the way back down the shank, and I'm going to stop my thread right where the barb of the hook would be. Next up, I'm going to go ahead and cut a clump of craft fur from my hank. This is hairline craft fur, however you can use what you find at your local hobby store or wherever you find them. I'll cut the butt off right at the hank, peel the fuzzies off, and then I'll measure out about a hook's length amount. It can be a little more, it can be a little less, it's not an exact science. Once I have the length that I want, I'll go ahead and tie it onto my shank. This is why the touching thread wraps are important. That way my hair won't begin to spin around the shank of my hook. I can just tie it on, pinch it down, and wrap. Don't worry if your butts don't come out clean. You can trim as much as needed once you're done and also wrap around with your thread to try and make a clean base. Once I get it trimmed, I'll go ahead and make a little ramp going to it, and we'll move on to our next ingredient, which is Crystal Flash. Now, I like to use clear Crystal Flash when it comes to these flies. However, you can use a UV Crystal Flash. You can use a red Crystal Flash. Use whatever you think is going to get the attention of the fish. Mind you, this fly, I like to tie slim, so it doesn't attract the fish by sight, per se. It's the movement of it in the water. So sight is not the most important thing to me. I'll make sure to trim these a little bit longer than the tail of my fly, and I'll pull them towards the back to make sure that they sit flush. Next up, we're going to go ahead and do our dubbing loop. Now for anyone who's never done a dubbing loop, all you have to do is wrap around your finger, begin to wrap your thread back around your shank, and make a big loop. And what that's going to allow us to do is put our dubbing in there. Now for dubbing brands, you can use whatever you have available and whatever you can afford. Fly Tires Dungeon makes very cheap and very well available types of dubbing. 
However, today I'm using a special blend of fur that I've gotten from my cats. One of the beautiful things about being a fly tire and a pet owner is being able to use your pet's fur to make completely and utterly original flies. As you can see, I'm pulling apart and restacking the dubbing to try and make it a little bit thinner than it would be without doing so. Doing this is going to allow me to put it within the loop and it'll allow me to also make a taper going towards the front. Once the dubbing is in the loop, we're gonna go ahead and make like a certain 80s song and spin it right round, baby, right round. This will cause the dubbing to begin to cord up and build a body. The best thing about dubbing is it makes a thick body without adding a lot of weight. So go ahead and spin it right round, baby, right round, like a record. Now, we begin to wrap forward. As I'm doing so, I'm using my other fingers to pull the dubbing back to try and make a bit of a tapered head going towards the front. That's also why I stack my hair with a slight bit of a taper. I like it to look almost like an arrow point. That way, when I go to put my wing on top, it won't lay on top and it'll actually look a little bit more natural. Any ends that you capture with your thread, you can go ahead and trim and make sure to wrap right behind the eyes where you stopped and that's going to capture that thread really, really well. Now our next piece of the puzzle is going to be more craft fur. Now before I put my craft fur on, I'm going to go ahead and brush this fly out a little bit and then invert it in my vise. One of the most important things you can do when you start tying flies is make sure that you're putting your wing on the right side. When I first started tying flies, I used to have a lot of dyslexic moments, and instead of tying my wing on the hook point side, I'd put it on the other side and wonder why my fly never looked right underwater. Well, it took a little while, but I finally learned how to do it. We'll take another thin piece of craft fur, lay it on top, cinch, and begin to wrap. This length I want to be just as long as the tail. This is going to look like the horn or pecan of the shrimp whenever it moves underwater. Once I get it tied the way I want it, I'll go ahead and snip my butts. I'll try and snip them as well as I can. Any strays that are left, I can go ahead and snip after. And then I want to begin wrapping around the head of this fly. I want to try and make a bit of a cone in the front, I guess you could say, or a head. It doesn't matter how you wrap around your eyes, but I'm making sure to take these mismatching wraps in order to try and hide a little bit of that craft fur. This isn't perfect per se, but as I've said before, perfect flies will catch fishermen. Whatever kind of fly you can tie will catch a fish. Once I hide as much of that hair as I think I can, I'll go ahead and begin to wrap forward and make my head. Once I'm done with that, I'll go ahead and do a whip finish, which is basically just a half hitch. Some people will put it right behind the hook eye. I, however, like to put it behind my dumbbell eyes. I find it makes my flies last a little bit longer and helps with the longevity, especially when you're dealing with creatures like redfish with thick crushers and hard, raspy mouths that can just tear thread to shreds. It's another reason why, whenever you're done, you're going to want to put head cement or super glue on the head and eyes of your fly to keep it in place and make sure that it can last for as many fish as you possibly want to catch. Once we do our half hitches, we'll go ahead and cut the thread loose We'll slick the hair back on top, and boom, your fly is good to go. It gets the Schwess seal of approval this time for sure. This is a fly that I love throwing for redfish. I don't know what it is about it, but every redfish I throw it in front of just can't get enough of it. Even on these cold fall and winter days, these redfish will still eat it, albeit a little bit lethargically, but it still goes in the mouth. And that's all that we need. We just need that hook to go close enough to them lips so that way we can set that hook and catch that fish. 
There you have it, my Schwest Shrimp. If you like this video, please drop a thumbs up and maybe even a subscription. Till next time, you guys, good bite, good fight, good night.